Hello and welcome. This is uh, Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And as a part of today's video, we are going to understand how to define swab limit, how to set the or how to identify the concentration of test and the standard for residue method. I hope you will find this video very, very useful. So these are the six different steps through which I am going to explain at this entire concept, starting from setting the swab limit till understanding how one can establish the standard sample concentration as well as the calculation part. I hope you are also excited for today's video. So before we move on, let me zoom in a little so that you will be able to see the content clearly. Okay, so I hope this is good to see. And uh, the first step is what? Calculate the MACO. So MACO stands for maximum allowable carryover. So in any cleaning validation as a part of uh, assessment, you need to understand how much is the acceptable carryover from the previous product. And that is called as the MACO. MACO stands for maximum allowable carryover of the previous product into the next product. And let us say you are going to calculate MACO in microgram. So there are two ways of calculating MACO. The one way is with the help of health based exposure limit. And the second way is with the help of general PPM limit approach. So within these two, you need to identify which one is giving the stringent MACO value and that has to be considered your MACO value. So let me explain the entire concept of uh, the calculating the macro in microgram with the example. Let us assume that you need to calculate the, the macro for substance C where the entire equipment area is 1500 decimeter square. So as a part of your manufacturing train, you have multiple equipments and adding all together their surface area is how much? It is 1500 decimeter square. MBS stands for the minimum batch size of the next product. And how much it is? It is 50 kilogram. And what is your general limit? It is 10 ppm. So I am going to calculate the MACO by using the second approach, which is general limit approach. So this is the calculation formula for MACO. Uh, according to the general PPM limit approach, that is MACO is equal to max concentration into MBS. Now, what is the max concentration? The max concentration is nothing but your general PPM limit. And how much it is? 10 PPM, right? So I will keep the 10 PPM over here. The minimum batch size is 50 kilogram. So I will end up getting 500 milligram as the MACO. And if I further convert it into a microgram, it will become 5 lakh microgram. So I hope you understand the calculation of MACO, right? So this is the very first step. You need to understand the MACO calculation. What is the MACO for the previous product and what is the requirement? You need to understand the max concentration and the minimum batch size of the next product. MBS stands for the minimum batch size of the next product. So once you have the MACO in the hand, which is 5 lakh microgram this time, what is the step number two? The step number two is now you need to calculate the residue limit in terms of microgram per decimeter square. Microgram per decimeter square. And this is the calculation formula to calculate the residue limit in terms of microgram per decimeter square. And that is MACO in microgram divided by total surface area in decimeter square. So by the calculation formula itself, you can understand why the calculation formula for residue limit is MACO divided by total surface area. Now just imagine you have a MACO of 5 lakh microgram. Now this 5 lakh microgram can be homogeneously distributed across the entire surface area available. And how much is the surface area available? It is 1500 decimeter square. 
So if I need to calculate, okay, so for 5 lakh microgram, that macro is 5 lakh microgram, and hence this 5 lakh microgram can get spread across 1500 decimeter square. So how much will be the content of previous product per 1 decimeter square? And that is what the residue limit, microgram per decimeter square, which is nothing but macro divided by total surface area. The moment you substitute the values into this equation, let us now understand what is the residue limit we are getting. And it is 5 lakh divided by 1500 equal to 333 microgram per decimeter square. So I hope you are clear until this calculation. The step number one, we calculated the macro in terms of microgram and in the step number two, we calculated residue limit in microgram per decimeter square. I hope you are with me so far. Let us now understand the step number three. The step number three is to calculate the swap limit in microgram per swap. So you are using the swap method for sampling the surface. And you need to understand now, what is the per swab limit for this particular product? And what is the unit we are giving? Microgram per swab. The content of previous product in microgram per swab. Let us understand how to do, uh, how to understand the swab limit now. So how much is your swabbing area? To understand, to define the swab limit, you must know the swabbing area. Swabbing area means what? How much is the surface you are swabbing? So most of the time, the people swab, you know, the 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. That becomes one decimeter square, right? So, or let us say that you have a swabbing area of uh, two decimeter square for this time, okay? I'm going to take some odd example for your understanding. Let us say it is two decimeter square. That is 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter. So this is the surface that you are going to swab. I hope you are clear up to this point. Let us now move on to the next part. So what is the content of residue present per decimeter square? What is the content as per the above example? What is the content of residue present per decimeter square? Per decimeter square means something but the content present in one decimeter square. So how much it is? Look at here. 333 microgram per decimeter square. It is how much? 333 microgram. I hope you are clear until this point that per one decimeter square, you will have 333 microgram of the previous residue. So if one decimeter square consists of 333 microgram, how much surface area of two decimeter square will have this residue? It is nothing but two into 333 microgram becomes 666 microgram. I hope you are clear until this point. It's a very simple math calculation. Now the next point or the next statement is very important. So the content per swab is what? The content per swab is nothing but how much area I am swabbing. So how much area I am swabbing? As such, I am swabbing the area of two decimeter square. So can I make a statement over here? The content per swab is nothing but the content present on two decimeter square. I mean, assuming that there is a hundred percent recovery, etc. Right? Now, what is the content present in two decimeter square? Look at here, it is 660 microgram. So, essentially, can I say that the content per swab, the content present on per swab will be 666 microgram of the residue. And this is nothing but my swab limit. So, my swab limit is nothing but now 666 microgram per swab. 666 microgram coming from where? Coming from the content present onto the swabbed surface area. And how much I am swabbing by the way? I am swabbing 2 decimeter square. So how much is the content present in 2 decimeter square? That is 666 microgram. And hence I am saying that the 666 microgram per swab will be my swab limit.
i hope you are clear until this point thank you so much let us now move on to the step number 4 calculate the sample concentration so the moment you swab the surface area of 2 decimeter square what you are going to do you are going to dilute this swab to a certain volume isn't it because you need to inject that particular swab right into a hplc or gas chromatography so what is the concentration of you know at your limit level what is the concentration limit level means what your swab limit and what is that 666 microgram per swab please remember this point so the sample concentration now is going to be a your swab content or the swab limit divided by sample dilution now what is the swab limit in this case swab limit is nothing but your swab content and how much you identified it is 666 microgram so with this now and let us assume that you have a sample dilution volume of 10 ml you are diluting the sample to 10 ml by the way let me also understand how much volume you use to dilute the swab sample <laughs> i hope it is 10 ml it can be less or more than 10 ml also but for this calculation i have taken sample dilution volume as a 10 ml and what is the swab limit it is 666 microgram so at the end i got the sample concentration equal to 66.6 microgram per ml so roughly this also can be called as a 66.6 ppm i hope you are with me so far yeah thank you so much the step number 4 is completed and we now understand the sample concentration and how much it is it is 66.6 microgram per ml at the step number 5 we are going to now define the standard concentration so in case of swab method in case of residue method how much is your standard concentration and most of the times it must be just equal to your sample concentration and what is the sample concentration by the way Hmm? the standard concentration should be equal to the sample concentration that is the statement we have and what is the sample concentration at limit level it is 66.6 microgram per ml it is 66.6 microgram per ml so how i can prepare the 66.6 microgram per ml of the standard right how i am going to make the standard of 66.6 ppm and this is the one way of making the 66.6 microgram per ml standard by measuring 66.6 uh, okay to be very accurate milligram of the standard to 100 ml and further diluting 10 ml to 100 ml i hope you clear on to the preparation of the standard too so we started our uh, assessment from the macro calculation then we understand okay what is the the residue content per decimeter square then we understand the swab limit right in terms of microgram per swab uh, microgram present per swab and based on to that we understand the sample limit or sample concentration that is 66.6 and finally now we are at deciding the concentration of the standard and not only that the preparation of the standard too so let us now understand once we have the standard and sample concentration everything in our hand can we define the calculation formula absolutely yes and this is the calculation formula on to your screen i hope you can able to see it clearly so standard preparation is how much let me correct it to its very accurate point 66.6 mg diluted to 100 ml and further 10 to 100 what is the test preparation the swab surface area is 2 dm square but diluted to 10 ml so can i say that the residue in microgram per swab now hmm? because our limit is in microgram per swab can be calculated like this a by b a stands for sample response b stands for standard response standard weight divided by 100 100 is your dilution factor 10 by 100 is the second dilution of the standard right the 10 by 1 what is 10 by 1 now this is the 10 ml of the sample dilution divided by 1 just as there is nothing i have kept one over there now the next term is very important that is one divided by recovery factor in all the cases most of the times for residue analysis your recovery will be low it may not be equal to 100% even maybe less than 80% sometime 
so to compensate for this lo loss of uh, recovery you need to apply the recovery factor so that you will compensate for the loss in the result i hope you understand the one by recovery factor and this thousand is multiplied to just convert milligram to microgram so this is the calculation formula for residue analysis so i hope you are clear from step number one to step number five right the first step is calculation of the macro second case, case step is calculation of the residue limit in microgram per decimeter square the third step is to calculate the swab limit the the fourth step to understand the sample concentration the fifth step is to understand the standard concentration and finally the sixth step is to define uh, the calculation formula i hope you are clear through all the stages thank you so much